being a cool kid right off the bat. Hi, beautiful ones. You're so beautiful, do you know? I know. Um, I, I say this every time I get up to teach and I have to say it again, that it's never not terrifying to get up and speak to you. Um, I honor all of the miles that your feet have run, your stories, your histories, things that make you you, the things that make our body beautiful because you're in it. And I just honor some of you could teach circles around maybe some of the things that I'm gonna say today, but I'm grateful that you're here. And I'm grateful that you would position your heart to learn from me. Let's pray. We like to pray a lot. <coughs> Father, thank you for the miracle of this present moment. The miracle, the opportunity to be present in this moment because it could change everything. It doesn't need more than a moment. This moment could change everything. Thank you for Amanda. Thank you for that stunning life. We receive every word. God, we ask that you would expand our capacity to hold what you're pouring out on us. You would expand our hearts and our spirits to catch what our minds are chasing down. That you would stop the chatter and the spinning and that you would, we would catch it in our, in our, in our spirits and in our, in our guts and everything else would follow suit. Help me, help me, amen. So I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about vulnerability today living an unfiltered life. It's the journey I'm on. I have been for a while now, a long while. That's why I did an album called The Undoing, because <coughs> it's the message of my life. I, I haven't always been the way that you experience me, and I won't always stay this way. It's just gonna get crazier. Mm. Not for the sake of crazy, for the sake of being undone, for the sake of being close, for the sake of being vulnerable until every fiber of my living, breathing being is just fully engaged in worship. It's why I'm alive, it's why I live. Every time we worship, I literally at some point say to myself, I was made for this. Oh, I was made for this. Every little bit of who I am knows, knows. Like I'm confident of who I am when I'm in worship. It's when I'm most like him. It's when I'm most clear. It's when I'm most centered. It's when I'm unfiltered. I'm not trying to impress myself or anyone else or there's no performance in that place. You cannot perform in the presence. It is impossible. And people are not stupid. They'll catch on pretty quick too. You cannot perform in the presence. We try so hard. I've been on this ongoing journey with the Lord. I was raised in um, Wesleyan and Nazarene churches. I'm a pastor's kid. Thank God, thank God for the articles of faith. They're the foundation of what I learned. I'm a, I was a Bible kid, man. I couldn't tell you the references to this day. Man, I, I like, I wish I could remember the address of all the scripture that rolls around in my head, but it just doesn't stick that way with me all the time. I see it. <sighs> That's why there's sticky notes on everything. Excuse my cough. I grew up in little Nazarene churches, some really big Nazarene churches. And often in the culture, having nothing to do with the beautiful intention of the theology. In the culture, in a semi-religious environment, there's, there's only so much that can grow. And I had learned as a leader that the best leaders know how to hold it together. That's what a strong leader is. A strong leader is someone who can keep it together when everyone else is freaking out, when they're making porches, when the world around us is falling apart, we will stand. I will stand. You know what I mean? 
it's like there's this there's this stupid stupid but that's that's what I thought oh man and, and I, w- without anyone speaking this to me, without anyone looking me in the face and saying, hey, guess what? You don't get to fall apart right now. You got to keep your together. <laughs> without anyone ever saying that to me, I felt the weight of it because that was, that was the culture. That was the culture. It was, hey, hey, sweetie, sweetie, you got to be okay. You got to be okay and you got to be okay right now. And, and what else you need to know is you never, you're never not going to be okay. <sighs> so fast forward to 23 years old and I'm like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. You're not? Well, I am. We're okay. We're all going to be okay here. And that's how we lead. I will lead you. I'm okay. Is your world falling apart? I will lead you. I almost walked off the stage. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I'm not. I would not have been okay. I'm being extreme, but I'm trying to paint the picture for you. Now what I can look back and be honest about, what I couldn't say then because I had to be okay. And failure was not an option. It wasn't an option to fall apart when you were leading a room. It wasn't an option to fall apart when your friends around you are, you know, being crazy. It wasn't an option. And, and the unintentional pressure was that once we've ministered to everyone else, we have to pray for all these folks, and then when they go home, we'll take care of ourselves. What the? Where did that come from? Hell. The pit of hell. I know I do a lot of like implied swearing. Uh, I do realize that that's happening right now. What I'm trying to convey to you, here's what I think, here's what I think. God help me, I know this is recorded. Here's what I think. I think that everyone in this entire room, <laughs> just take your, uh, any, your offense hats off. I think that everyone has a reservoir of F-bombs inside of them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you too, sweetie. You too. Right behind your big hair and your big earrings. Right behind your big fat bubble. Right here. A reservoir of f bombs that are just mm, they're just sitting there like. <laughs> just just in case they're like hemorrhoids. So just in case. Just in case you need them to pop out. To let you know that something, there's some inflammation. Something's not quite right on the home front. You almost said the F word. Something's wrong. I don't know what this motion is. I keep doing it. I don't know. I don't understand my own visuals. You know what I mean? Okay, so um, I'm saying all that to say that deep inside of all of us is this kid that knew no shame. There, there, there's this, this childlike thing that Amanda was talking about. <laughs> and over time, we've, we've, been, we've become so well behaved. We've become so well behaved because we think, we know, we know all the right things to say. Even when we're struggling, we're like, well, I know, I know it's a hard time, but I know, I know that God is good, hallelujah. I know that he's good all the time. Do you? Because, like, when I get a picture of how good he really is, that's when I'm a hot mess because I don't feel like I have to be together anymore because he is. I can finally take a deep breath and go, oh, thank God. I don't have to impress anyone. <laughs> oh. And I didn't realize how much pressure I was living under until I wasn't under it anymore. Until I came to a place of grace. Well, guess what, friends? Bill talks about all the time, nothing can grow in religion. <laughs> all the time. What an exaggeration. He, he said a number of times. <laughs> what? 
we okay well he, he said that nothing can grow in religion but anything can grow in grace so when i came here god in his kindness as a father was patient to grow the good thing that i was that we were growing and he's like oh we'll touch those things in time I'm gonna let you be in grace. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna take the pressure off so that you can just be okay with your humanity. You can be okay with not being okay. I remember um, being in first year and my revival group pastor <laughs> who is working security now. I love that man. He, um, we were in a fire tunnel. You ever heard of a fire tunnel? <laughs> okay, it's basically a prayer line. You walk through it, stuff like that. Lots of things happen there. And then, so I'm standing in the prayer line praying for people as they walk through. And his big bear hands, bear, bear paws just come on my shoulder, pull me out of the line. He said, you hey, sit down. You go through the line, sit down. And I'm like, <laughs> I just didn't. All of a sudden I realized that my world was crashing down because my I thought he was punishing me. I was afraid of being punished. I thought I had done something wrong. I thought he thinks I'm not okay. Dang it, I thought I was okay. I thought I seemed so okay today. I feel okay, I'm okay. So I went through the line, I went back to my seat and I sobbed. I just sobbed my eyes out. And it was in that moment that I realized I. I I was cracking under the pressure of needing to be okay. He said, Stephanie, he saw me even before I did. He said, Stephanie, what you carry is a gift to the world. What you're carrying is something that we, we really need. And if you don't take care of you, all of this is it's not worth anything. You just seem tired today and I just thought you need, could use some prayer. It was that simple. So that was the beginning of my journey here. Fast forward, so many things happened. The Lord has been throwing off the filters. How many of you know that filters, when we receive with a filter, we give with filters? If we are receiving from the Lord, and we are believing something untrue about the father of all fathers. If we have a distorted picture of what the discipline of a good father really looks like, that he's not waiting to punish us, that he's not falling off of his throne if we make a mess. If we could get a hold of that, It changes everything. I was uh, a few weeks back, maybe uh, maybe a month ago now, I'm just having these ongoing conversations with the Lord because Stephen and I, we're in counseling too. We're just all, we're all about it. Thank God for Jason Valentin. Woo. But um, <laughs> Jason's told me like what my problems are for years. It's fine. So now it's just, now Steve and I go together. It's fine. He, he's, he's always been like a big brother since I moved here. And he'd be like, hey, guess what? He says, yeah, that. that's, um, that's a thing. And I'm like, oh, is it a thing? Oh, I didn't know it was a thing. And um, so when I finally started believing Jason and the Holy Spirit, a lot of things started falling off. Anyways, I say that to say we're in this like stunning journey of being vulnerable because we were both raised in pressure. Completely different pressure. My amazing husband is right here. His name is Steve. He left, he left work to be with me today to come and hear me speak. I feel very cared for by you. Thank you. And um, so in, in this process where, I mean, I am in it with the Lord. I, if I'm honest with you about <coughs> where I am in this moment in real time, I am under the knife. He is carving me out. The most steady-handed surgeon is operating on my life. And I know the work that he is doing is permanent. 
the work that he is doing is a thing that will always be in me. And so I'm like, I'll stay on this table as long as you want me here. <coughs> you have to switch my arms sometimes, otherwise you'll get a puddle of sweat in one arm. You have to let that one breathe. And then skin on, you know, skin on skin here. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to be clear. You'd understand what I'm doing. So we're in this place. A, a lot of it's where, I mean, these, these, the songs that we're writing right now, I mean, they're coming out of cra crazy places, crazy places that the Lord is taking us personally. Anyways, so I'm in the kitchen. I'm working, I'm cleaning, I'm trying to get some stuff done. And it was one of those days where I'm like, okay, I have to do this by this certain time. And Wonder Babe, we had, we had painted and we had danced and we'd worshiped and we'd played. And I was like, okay, mommy's got to do this. So I gave her you version. It's like, I only let her watch like two things. Poor kid. And one of those things, like if it has to do with art or dancing or I mean, in, any music, all of the arts, I'm like, yeah, let's watch it, you know. Um, or if it's animals, you know, if it's a learning thing, I'm all about it. So they have this Bible you version thing for kids. It's on your phone. I let her play on the phone and I hear the story. She's clicked on it herself because they're brilliant she's clicked on <coughs> the creation story herself and she and I hear like they have the voices you know all that kind of stuff and all I don't, I don't know why this part caught my attention <coughs> but I hear you know the serpent's voice the whoever they got to do the voice for the serpent's like <laughs> it's really bad I'm, I, I'm just trying to get it together <laughs> he told you not to eat from the tree <laughs> because he didn't want you to be like him. Mm. Mm. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, if Satan sounded that stupid, I would never listen to him. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I can't say that. So anyways... I, I said to the Lord, it's like in that moment I hear him say it, and I'm like, yeah, why, why did you tell them, not, why did you tell them not to eat from that tree? Like, frick, why was there a tree? Like, why would you put that there if you knew that it had the good and the bad things? Like, well, it's like, it's like. I'm not even going to say what it's like. Um, <coughs> I'm going to skip that thought. Next one. And so I'm, it sends me down asking all these questions of God. Like, well, I love, that's how I talk to God. I'm asking tons of questions and then ask, listening for answers. I love it so much. If he's not talking, I'm dying. That's how I feel. I'm like alive because I'm hearing him say something. And if he's not saying something, I'm like running back to the last thing I heard him say. I'm like so, that's a good word right there though. If you don't know what he's saying right now, go back to the last thing he said and say, hey, are we done here? What haven't I gotten? Why are we still here? Halle. Yeah. So, <coughs> in, uh, I don't have time to tell you that story. In, in my other class, I told a story. Here I am telling it. I told a story about this guy in my, in my school of ministry class. <coughs> it was like, he loved to rap, but he was the worst. And, um... <coughs> I mean, like, he, he didn't think that he was good. It was just, like, really funny. And we had this crazy revival of worship breakout. And I remember one day I was leading worship. And the presence just, I mean, it's so raucous. I don't even have time to talk about all of that right now. But <laughs> people who didn't, weren't even, who didn't even sing or anything, they were just took over leading worship. I remember handing the mic to this guy because I got so blasted. And I just, last thing I remember was this. Lights out. <laughs> but this kid would walk around like, uh, yeah, uh, Jesus, son of God, mercy. I mean, like, it was like, okay, yeah, yes. And he was one of those guys that was like, I say, Halle. Yeah, he was that guy. So I'm just giving you a little bit of that. <laughs> Not because I think I'm a rapper. <laughs> That's where that came from. <laughs> so I'm asking God all these questions. 
And I'm like, whoa, we've never talked about this actually. Why was your tree? Why did you do that? Why would you, was this a setup? Was this a tease? I mean, I don't think it is, but really, what were you thinking? And he said, well, he said, what was the first lie ever believed? Like, I'm thinking, why did they, I'm breathing like I'm 600 pounds right now, (laughs) right now. (sighs) I need a brown paper bag. (sighs) I'm not pausing to hear from the Lord. I'm pausing to catch my breath. So I'm asking the Lord, <coughs> well, why, why is it that vulnerability is so scary? Why, is, why did Eve hide? Why did Adam hide? Why, like if they knew you and they were created in your image, why, did, why would you do that? They, they knew it. They knew it like no one else. They weren't even like born of like any of us. They were made. Like at least I don't know. I don't, I don't hear, read anything about them being babies. (laughs) That could get so weird. Okay. But right? Like they were, they were created with the knowledge, the understanding that they were made in his image, that they were his favorite, that out of all creation... He made them to enjoy them, to be with them. And and, and even beyond that, he's like, ooh, just for fun, I bet they would love to rule the earth. Adam, you want to name the cattle? Can you just hear him like, Philip? You leave her alone. Philip. Like, what do you, what do you name cattle? <laughs> I, this is so, the, the creation story is so vivid in my mind that I can hardly talk about it. Because I'm like, I'm like on, you know, I'm, next thing I know, I'm like on the cloud that hovered over the waters and I'm like everywhere. The next thing I'm like up with the birds, like, oh! book. I'm like, oh my God, did you see it? What's its name? Like I, this is how I'm experiencing this, experience, experiencing this when I read it. So, <laughs> so the Lord took me all the way back to the garden. I'm just going to read some of this. <sighs> Deep breath. There's so, there's so many things to talk about, but spirit, lead me to the ones that are most important for this moment. I even love when he, when he makes light. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And get this, this blows my mind. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Why is it we hide from the light? Because it marks our seasons. It's a sign. It tells us what day, what day we're living in, the years of our lives. It tells the truth. It shows us where we're at in this whole thing. <clears throat> and I'm not really sure all the things that were going on in the garden because I don't quite yet have a grid for all of it. But I will say, I doubt, I don't think he was on a schedule with this whole thing of being together. I mean, like, because back in the day, I mean, like, Methuselah was, like, 969 or something. He didn't seem to be in a hurry when the world began. (coughs) Anyways, I just thought that was interesting. The creation of man and woman, Genesis 2. If you want to turn there, do it. If you don't, just watch me breathe heavily. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their hosts. By the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made earth and heaven. 
it seems redundant, right? But it's like, there's a reason for him being specific. Now no shrub of the field was yet in the earth and no plant of the field had yet sprouted for the Lord God had not sent rain upon the earth and there was no man to cultivate the ground. But a mist used to rise from the earth and water the whole surface of the ground. And the Lord, can you see it? Oh my God, I can see it. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden and he, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river flowed out of the Eden to water the garden and from there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is Pashan. You just gotta say it fast, Pashan. It flows. It flows around the whole land of Havla, where there is gold, where there is gold, Amanda. Proffed out. The gold of that land is good. The whole, so many words, I don't know. And the onyx stone are there. Lots of pretty things. Um, stones with very intelligent names. Um, the name of the second river is, it flows around the whole land of Kush. The name of the third river is Tigris. It flows from the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Thank the Lord for school. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it. The Lord God commanded the man saying, from any tree of the garden, you may eat freely. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. And then the Lord said, and the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to, for, for, the man, for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky. I know this is a lot. Stick with me. And brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. So fun. The man gave names to all the cattle and the birds of the sky and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon man, and he slept. And then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. The Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. All that to get to this. This is before there was shame. This is when creation was to be together. He wanted to be with them, he wanted to be close, wanted to walk, go for walks. Let's talk about everything. It was all about intimacy. Chapter three, now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, has, indeed, has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden, you may, we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. The servant said to the woman, you surely will not die, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You're welcome. <laughs> no, hold on, I don't want to lose this. He tells her, he knows that on the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God. Weren't they already? Here's what I think happened. I think that Eve, I think that in, a, um, in the garden, I think that the father wanted to be with them. And I think that a real father and a real friend and a real lover knows that true intimacy can't happen without consent. It requires someone else in a relationship to say, I want it too. So I believe, this is Stephanie's version, I believe that God himself withheld his knowing, even his knowing of what they would choose, because he said, love 
gives the option. Here's what I think the tree might have been about. If freedom is going to exist, there had to be the option to choose it. It doesn't count if he made them and removed all the options. It's like, so you can't, you can't even mess up. And you have to be my best friend. <sighs> Mine. Mine. That's weird. And he's so relational. He's such a father. He's such a family. He is family. He's, he's so into this thing that is intimacy. He's so desired to be close to us. That he put a tree there. He said, here you have freedom. I want to walk with you. I want to talk to you. I want to be close to you. Here's what I think happened with Eve. I know we're out of time. I think that Eve decided not to choose vulnerability. I think that Eve probably walked around with a little something in her heart for a while instead of talking to God about it. Because the truth is she already knew that she was made in his image, that they were his favorite. She knew the truth. It's built into every fiber of her being. It's like me saying, I don't look like my dad. <laughs> I have his facial expressions. I have his, I'm, right? Like it's impossible to not have my dad to just spill out of me. He's in my DNA. It's impossible to separate it. And she knew that, but she kept something inside because she was gonna be okay. Just keeping it together, walking through the garden. I think she probably got a little grumbly on her insides. Didn't want to deal with something like freaking Adam. He's always talking to Adam. Freaking rib deal, what's that? I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but all I know is that my world where I used to come from, there were a lot of things that instead of letting them out because I wasn't actually allowed to let them out, I, di I didn't do that. I kept them inside and I decided to process it myself instead of being vulnerable in the moment, in real time, instead of saying right now, hey God, I had this question today. Why was the tree there? See, I... There's maturity goes straight to the father instead of talking with a snake. And something happens when we decide not to deal with our internal worlds, when we decide not to be emotionally healthy, when we decide not to be emotionally available. What we do to ourselves is get so screwed up that the first time a snake comes in that's really smart, who was apparently having a oh, squirrely day too, comes over and goes, so, and what does she believe? The lie, the reason we hide is because she believed a lie that her father was hiding something from her. Thus began the hiding for all of generations. It was the lie that a good father, she didn't believe he was good anymore. She thought he was hiding something from her, that he was withholding a good thing from her. So that translates bad father, bad kid. I'm going to make a bad choice. I'm going to hide because now I'm ashamed. And in the end, what happens? She gives it to Adam. God comes over, withholds his knowing and says, what'd you do? Did you drink? Did you eat from the tree? What happened? What does Adam say? She did it. She did it. She gave it to me. What does Eve do? I was deceived by a snake. What would have happened for all of history to come if Adam had just said it was my choice? It was my choice. I'm owning it. I'm making myself vulnerable. I'm going to say I, I needed you and I didn't talk to you first. I talked to my wife who talked to a snake. F that. where the first lie began, where the first filter was put on our eyes. It's not just people who are broken you're dealing with. We've got an epidemic because we have believed something wrongly about God and none of us want to admit to it because we're okay, we're good church people. But the truth is that we have believed that there is a father who is withholding from his children, that he hides things from us, and so we hide. Can I pray real quick? Ooh. 
I just think, how, how would all of history have been different if they had just humbled themselves instead of hiding? We can't let ourselves get to the place where we stay internal, we stay out of family, we stay alone with ourselves, we isolate, we're just okay. We, we manage our behavior instead of maintaining, tending to our, our internal worlds. They got alone with their thoughts. <clears throat> in the first chat with a the snake, they were done. Whew. Stand with me, let's pray. I don't mean to yell at you. I'm on fire about this. It's what <clears throat> he's doing inside of me. I, I'm realizing now, it's one of the reasons why I'm singing King of My Heart every time I lead worship. It's because the declaration that he is good, it's, it's rewiring the thing I was taught. He's better than I thought he was. He's that good. He's that good. He's, he's, he's so good that he gave us the option. He gave us freedom. Father, We're going back to the garden today. We want to go back to the garden today. Take us back to the garden today. Before all the filters, before we were born with generations of filters. <clears throat> before there was shame. When it was the way you wanted it. When it was that first desire in your heart just to be close, to be near. To be with us. To have intimacy. To be family. And we make this simple choice on our insides today. We step out of loneliness and we step into family. We step out of darkness and we step into light. Let your light tell us what day it is, what season we're in. To let it tell us about the years of our lives. Lord, I ask that you would heal the damage <coughs> from all the filters that went before us. We don't need another way to see things. We need new eyes. We need him to heal our eyes. Heal our eyes so that we see things the way that you always saw them. Take us back. Take us back. Show us how to come to you first, to go to family first, so we're not thrown off for generations to come because we talk to a liar. The Father loved us so much that he sent his spirit to live inside of us, even though he'd be, he knew he would be taking up residence with liars. Because we were all born with filters, but he came and he filled our humanity. He'd live with a liar because he loves you. And he's removing the filters today. Take us back. Speak deep, deep into our spirits. We draw on the thing that has always been there, that we're born in your image, that we were made in your likeness that we're like you and that you're good. And because of that, so are we. We can do this. We can live in intimacy. It's the reason we exist. We love you. I ask God that you would go deep. Sorry for keeping them. Multiply their time. In Jesus' name, amen.